Good day, YouTube. Welcome to another interesting episode of Recon Van Driller. Hopefully, everybody's having a blessed day. Now, on the last video, I started off the video stating that I was going to explain the difference between someone who prepares for the life on the road responsibly and legitimately versus someone who does it irresponsibly looking simply for the easy way out slash a handout from society. And on that last video, I did not do a good job explaining that. I mean, I may have started to explain, but then the video turned into one huge rant about basically how I felt about people who abused the fundraising campaigns when living life on the road. I mean, I just went into a rant and I apologize for that. Now, the reason why I still put up that video is because, what the hell, I mean, somebody might watch it and might get something out of it. They might watch it for laughs, giggles, whatever. So I'm going to still leave the video up. But on this particular episode, I'm going to actually break down the difference starting right now. Now, rather you're living in a van or in an RV or in a car or you're just a minimalist living out of your backpack. Now, someone who prepares for life on the road legitimately and the way you should, that individual is going to, number one, take into consideration the type of skill set that they have and places where they may be able to go to where, the, to where they can capitalize off of their skill set. That, or if you don't have any specific skill set, if you're just a type of person that just works general labor type of jobs like myself, then when, when you get ready to live life on the road, at that point, you're going to have done your your research on what states and what cities have the best economy with the most amount of jobs that might pay the most versus areas where the economy might be so and so and then the areas where the economy might be questionable to virtually non-existent. Now, the person who chooses to live life on the road, hoping for an easy way out, plan, you know, hoping for an easy way out, hoping for society along the way to give them some sort of handout, that type of person, most likely, they're not going to, they're going to have the mindset of, you know what, I'm sick of my job, I'm quitting my job, and then they go ahead and they quit their job. Because they're going to be on the road. So they're going to be thinking no, no bills. But they're not going to take into consideration the bills that they're going to have outside of housing. Or the bills they're going to have even associated with life on the road. So with that being said, they're not going to, most likely, they're not going to bother to look up <coughs> or do any amount of research concerning cities and states that have decent economies versus ones that have a bad economy and then the ones that are so and so they might up and decide you know what I'm gonna leave Michigan and I'm going to Florida and when they get to Florida they're not gonna take into consideration that the economy in the state of Florida at best is mediocre they're gonna be thinking I'm going to go down there, I'm going to enjoy the nice weather and the winter, I'm going to enjoy the ocean, the women, the entertainment, the whole nine yards. They're not going to be thinking that in Florida, the wages in the state of Florida are among the lowest in the union. Economically, they're mediocre at best. They're not going to be thinking that kind of shit. Because... They're planning on hitting the road and taking it easy. 
and if they fall into some financial trouble, those are the type that will have a account set up to where they can have their fundraising campaign and then e beg like crazy and hope that they get enough money to where they don't have to go to work. They don't have to recognize the realities of being an adult because they'll continuously get all type of handouts from society. Now, someone who prepares properly for life on the road will also take into consideration their needs. Like, number one, how many people are going to go? Will it be yourself? Will it be your family? Will it be just you and a pet? I mean, how many people are going to go on the road with you? I mean, and then what are you going to take on the road? What are you going to absolutely positively need to take on the road? And kind of piggybacking with the employment deal, what kind of money are you going to be making on the road, generally speaking? I mean, it could change a little bit here and there. <coughs> but in general, what kind of money does your occupation pay? So once you factor that out, then you're going to want to buy a vehicle that's going to not only meet at least the majority of your needs, but also will meet your financial needs to where you can drive a vehicle that will allow you to stay within budget for your housing and slash your gas. Like if you're working a bunch of minimum wage jobs, then me personally, I would never consider purchasing an RV because number one, they're gas guzzlers. Number two, they're extremely high maintenance vehicles. And just, and all in all, there is not that reliable of a vehicle, period. You would be better off, especially if you're by yourself, purchasing a minivan. Like a Plymouth Grand Voyager or something. Or if you want something a little bigger, okay, you can purchase yourself a Chevy G20 conversion man. I mean something of that nature for someone whose income is on the low side of things would be much more practical than any RV. So someone who prepares correctly and legitimately to live life on the road will want to make sure that they purchase the right type of vehicle for their needs and also for their financial needs because you don't want to get a vehicle that's gonna that's gonna take up so much gas to where half your check is gonna go for gas that's not gonna make any sense that's gonna be total that's just gonna be downright stupid so okay we cover the vehicle we covered the job situation, the slash economy. Now let's see what else. I mean, those are those are the two biggies that come to mind: is the economy, and then what type of vehicle you're gonna want to have. Now, there's more out here. I just gotta think for a second. So just give me a minute to ponder here and think about what else. Oh, well, here, yeah. Now, piggybacking off the vehicle deal, someone who prepares responsibly for living life on the road, you're going to also want to take into consideration where you're going to head to. Like, what kind of climate will that area have? What type of land? Are you going to be on flat land? Are you going to be in the mountains? Are you going to be in the deserts? I mean, what kind of land? Now, me personally, if I was going to go somewhere and be in the desert or be in the mountains, <clears throat> I would either, I mean, my first choice of a vehicle would be a 4x4 slash an all-wheel drive van. That or a full-size four-wheel drive SUV. That way... I can get through the mountains or the ruggedness of the desert without having to 
be hard on my transmission without having to worry so much about getting stuck. Versus if you're just going to be on flat land, then, you know, if you got the money, an RV would be fine. Or your typical van would be fine. Would, yeah, would be fine. Or for those that want to live in a car, that would be fine. If you're going to be on flat land. Then you want to recognize your climate. Like if you're gonna be in an air, if you're gonna be in a climate where it's cold most of the time, my philosophy is the smaller the, your living quarters, the better off you'll be, because the quicker you'll be able to heat it up, the quicker you'll be able to heat it up, which means the less energy that you'll have to utilize. I mean, you won't have to spend so much money on propane. And if the vehicle is small enough, your body heat will be able to sustain heat in the vehicle long enough for you to at least get a decent night's sleep without waking up in the middle of the night having to cut on your propane heater or nothing of that nature. And even during the summer, if your living quarters are smaller, that would be beneficial because if your vehicle is small enough, you can probably purchase you a couple of 10 inch battery operated fans. Plus, if you got some money, you can cut a vent on top of your vehicle and that could basically be your air conditioning. As where if your vehicle is bigger, then you're going to probably have to have some sort of air conditioning device to cool that vehicle down efficiently. Now, someone who would hit the road and not be responsible in their prep before they hit the road would just go out here and buy any old vehicle that was cheap or any old vehicle that they thought was cute or they thought was just the shit. And then when they get the vehicle, the vehicle might be a piece of junk the vehicle all in all does not serve their purpose <coughs> the gas economy most likely is going to be terrible and basically they're going to be spending all their money and time fucking with that vehicle because when they purchase that vehicle they are irresponsible in their purchasing and prep for that vehicle So they're going to be spending probably a lot of time broke down on the side of the road, crying about how much gas it takes, how much repairs they had to do, how high maintenance it is, and every time they turn around, they're going to get stuck in the snow, or they're going to get stuck in the they're going to get stuck in the sand in the desert. Their transmission might go out because they've been driving up mad mountains and shit. So you know, someone who's irresponsible in the purchasing and prep of their vehicle for hitting the road. Those are some of the common things that those individuals typically complain about. I'm not saying because those things happen you're irresponsible. I'm just saying in general for those that are irresponsible that's those are the things that typically happen. So you know the the more the, the, the point of this video is when you get ready to live life on the road, be responsible. Do your homework. Do your due diligence. Prep, prep, and prep, and prep. Don't just think of the idea and then just, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to just do it. I mean, you can't just do it. I mean, you can, but me personally, as I said on my, on, on my older videos, I'm the type of person that thinks things through and I try to prep for stuff like hitting the road. I don't just hit the road. And you got to do your homework. You, you, you got to prep. You got to know where you're going to go, what you're going to do, what kind of money you're working with, all that shit. So hopefully this video has helped some of you out. So. Until the next time, everybody try to have a blessed day, and I will see you in my next video.
like and subscribe below and thanks for watching another episode of Vegan Van Driller.